Hey everyone, this is Jeffrey again, speaking on behalf of Uri Peleg and Gorilla Poker. Uri is still dealing with a rough cough and a bit of a sore throat, so I'm going to go ahead and be the voice for at least one more video. So in this last video, we talked about how suited connectors have some properties that make them good candidates for padding our 3 bedding ranges. Taking this idea too far, however, can be problematic. We all know the feeling of looking down and seeing, say, instead of 7-6 suited, 7-5 suited, or 9-7 suited, or 9-6 suited even, and feeling the allure of the felt. And why not, you might think? They share the same kinds of properties, they can serve equity in a manner similar to what we showed last week, and they're deceptive. People never see it coming when you hit that backdoor draw, etc. These are some of the strengths that suited connectors have, and it seems like they should maybe also apply to their dirty bastard offspring as well. So in today's video, we're going to turn a critical eye to these other suited connectors, the gappers, and see if we can't draw a hard but needed line between these kinds of hands and their superior counterparts. If we look at a range, like say a top 35% range, we can see that a hand like 7-5 suited has 36% equity, while 6-5 suited has 37.5. A bit more, but not really a big difference, right? Even 8-5 suited has just a touch under 36%. So it's tempting to view these hands as basically the same. A percent here, a percent there. What's the big deal, right? And if we look at how a hand like 8-5 suited or 7-5 suited does when it's up against 6-5 suited, they're obviously the better hands, right? They both dominate 6-5 suited, so they have something like 63-65% to 65 equity in a versus match. Whenever both hands hit their lower pair, they have the better kicker. Whenever they hit the top pair, the top pair is superior. Or even if they both hit two pairs, the dominating hand simply has the edge in all superficial regards. But this is how the hands would perform if they could just check it down and see all five cards without trouble. And poker just isn't that simple in practice. Flopping or turning a small pair in particular often isn't something that's going to be able to stand up to a lot of pressure and get to showdown. With this in mind, let's define two different kinds of equity that can be helpful here in breaking down strengths or weaknesses of these types of hands. The first we'll call nut equity, and the second we'll call bluff catcher equity. Nut equity is the ability to make straights, flushes, trips. For instance, pocket pairs have nut equity also. The idea is that this is the part of your equity that's going to make very strong hands. Strong enough to value bet on later streets. All suited hands have this in terms of backdoor flush draws. You'll hit your backdoor flush about 4% of the time, and not only is it often going to be strong enough to value bet, but also it's more deceptive and will extract a little more value indirectly in that sense as well. So in reality, this 4% is actually worth a lot more than that part of your equity that counts on you hitting a weak pair. In other words, this is the part of your equity that we call overrealized. On the other hand, bluff catcher equity is the ability to be, you know, maybe strong enough at showdown to win, but it's not something that's good enough to value bet. And a villain bets it only beats bluffs. It's equity, it's there, but it's the kind of equity that isn't necessarily going to be realized often enough to be terribly useful. This is the part of your equity that we would call underrealized. In very simple terms, it's kind of like if somebody asked you, would you rather have a hand that makes a bluff catcher 70% of the time, or a hand that makes the nuts 20% of the time? And even if it whiffs the other 80%, you'd want to take the 20% nutted hand every time. No question. Because in the long run, you're going to be able to leverage that 20% into a lot more value. So let's go back to the suited connector extended family and make some comparisons. Let's look at 5-6 suited, 5-7 suited, and 5-8 suited, and count how many combos of various draws that each one can make given two cards. First, 6-5 suited. 6-5 suited can make a gut shot with 2-3, 2-4, 3, 7, 4, 8, 7, 9, and 8, 9. If any of those pairs of cards are on board, 6, 5 suited will have a draw for an inside straight. It can also have an open-ended draw with 3, 4, 4, 7, and 7, 8. A 7, 5 suited can make a gut shot with 3, 4, 3, 6, 4, 8, and 8, 9, and it can make open-enders with 4, 6, and 6, 8. And finally, 8-5 suited makes gut shots with 4-6, 4-7, 6-9, and 7-9, and can only make an open-ended draw with 6-7. So as we said, the strength of these types of hands is in the nut equity. 
You're not really looking to hit a pair and check it down, you're looking to make strong hands and get lots of money in. But we can break down the nut equity itself into useful or less useful parts as well, because again, some hands are better at realizing their equity than others. In this case, a gut shot draw is worth only about half as much as an open-ended draw, at best. The open-ender has twice as many outs and is going to hit more often and sooner on average than the gut shot will. So the gut shot is generally going to have to fold a lot more to pressure before it's realized and thus will not realize as much equity. So we could score these hands based on their nut equity. Let's just call a gut shot a one-point draw and an open-ended a two-point draw. This is probably being a little generous, but it makes it a, kind of an easy exercise. So looking back at our hands, we have 6-5 suited with 6 gut shot draws and 3 open-ended draws for a total of 12 points. 7-5 suited has 4 gut shots and 2 open-enders for a score of 8 points. And 8-5 suited has 4 gut shots and the 1 open-ended draw for a total of 6 points. So 6-5 suited is 1.5 times more likely to make a straight as 7-5 suited is, and 2 times more likely to make a straight than 8-5 suited. And like we said, with the ability to leverage extra value out of your very strong and more deceptive hands, these are kind of compounding effects. So we're probably even being a bit generous here and not counting the open-enders as much as they're actually worth in practice, relative to the gut shots. One nice way to conceptualize this and sort of drive the point home is to look at gut shots versus open-enders versus combo draws. So in terms of outs, we have 4 outs for a gut shot, 8 for the open-enders, and a combo draw has something like 12 outs or maybe even more. Obviously there are various kinds of combo draws, but this would be something like a gut shot plus a flush draw. So if we take the earlier hands and the scores we gave them, and we view them through this lens of comparing combo draws to open-enders and gut shots, it's kind of like saying that in terms of equity realization and the ability to extract value, 6-5 suited is like a combo draw, while 7-5 suited is more like an open-ender, and 8-5 suited is more like a gut shot. So this kind of helps us visualize that while you can 3-bet all of these kinds of hands, and you can raise a better with all of these kinds of draws, there are big, big differences between these kinds of hands, and that's just something that's important to keep in mind. Okay, so that's it for this week's video. Feel free to leave some comments for us on the YouTube channel. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, what kind of videos you'd like to see in the future. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Check out some of our other videos. There's definitely some good stuff in there for you. Definitely check out the Gorilla Poker website if you haven't done so yet. We got some great stuff there. We have Uri's first course, Redline Philosophy and Practice, which is a course about improving your redline, which, as we all know, is the sexiest color of lines in poker. Also, be sure to check out our preflop solutions, which are GTO ranges that we've solved for various stakes and rake structures, and also for various environments, such as a live casino environment, where bed sizes tend to be a little bit bigger and ranges can drastically change. Thanks for watching this week's video, and we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.